There are a number of things to consider when involving volunteer drivers, but this presentation will hopefully cover everything you need to know. Drivers using their own vehicles in their voluntary activities should tell their insurers. They should make it clear that they will only receive out-of-pocket expenses to make it clear that it is not commercial use of the vehicle. There shouldn't be higher premiums for this as volunteering should be regarded as part of the social, domestic and pleasure use of the vehicle. Some insurers may see volunteering as a business use, but they should not raise the premium. The Association of British Insurers and a list of insurers that have said they will not charge volunteer drivers extra. Organisations should make sure that volunteers have told their insurers about their volunteer driving. A simple way to do this is to give the volunteers a standard letter with a return slip for the insurance company to complete. Contingent motor liability insurance may be available to cover organisation if there is an accident and there is a problem with the driver's insurance. It's good practice for driver's expenses to be paid back, but organisers should be careful not to give amounts that could be seen as going beyond the reimbursement of actual expenses. HMRC sets limits on how much mileage allowance can be paid back tax-free for travel costs, so that people don't make a profit from these payments. There are upper limits on how much can be reimbursed tax-free, not recommended rates for organisations to pay. Some organisations reimburse using lower mileage rates due to budgetary constraints. The limits reflect costs such as wear and tear and fuel. Passengers can be paid £5 per mile per passenger. This can be claimed as well as the car and van mileage rates. Volunteers should keep clear records of journeys undertaken as volunteers, with the mileage, time, date and purpose of the journey. If a volunteer wants to and the organisation is able to, they can claim their actual expenses of fuel, insurance, road tax, servicing, repairs and depreciation if they come to more than the approved mileage rate. The volunteer would need to keep a record of their actual expenses and the number of miles they had driven privately and for the organisation throughout the year. They would then use these to complete a self-assessment tax return. If an organisation pays more than the approved mileage rate without detailed records, a volunteer's insurance could be invalidated because they could be seen to be making a profit from their driving. Then the organisation would also be liable for income tax and if the volunteer is claiming benefits, it could have an effect on their payments. The organisation should ask to see an MOT test certificate if the vehicle is over three years old. The organisation should be reasonably confident that the vehicle is safe. This can be checked by looking to see if the vehicle has any obvious problems and asking the volunteer what maintenance is carried out. There are legal requirements for wearing seat belts. It's important to remember that cars must have front and rear seat belts and all passengers should wear seat belts. Passengers aged over 14 are legally responsible for making sure they are wearing a seat belt. Drivers are responsible for making sure that children under 14 years are using an appropriate child or booster seat. Visit the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accident for more information on seatbelts and the law. By law, a driver must notify the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency or DVLA if they have a medical condition or disability that may affect their driving, they develop a condition or disability, an existing condition or disability that may affect their ability to drive develops. The DVLA will then make a decision about the person's fitness to drive, not telling the DVLA about a condition or disability is a criminal offence. The driver could also invalidate their insurance if they do not follow medical advice not to drive. Drivers should be trained. If they are carrying elderly or disabled people or children, particularly in picking up and setting down passengers, in disability awareness and customer care. For further advice, you can contact the Community Transport Association and there are also useful safety resources available on the ROSPA and THINK sites. Drivers should rest for at least 15 minutes every two hours within a journey and between journeys. It's a good idea for organisations to consider providing ID for volunteer drivers so that the people they are picking up can clearly recognise them. The identification includes the main telephone number for the voluntary driving scheme in event of query. Drivers should not drink alcohol for at least 12 hours before a journey. This is an issue that you can tackle in training and you may want to have a clear policy on it. Luggage and shopping should be put in the boot or secured to prevent injury. 
carried with clients at the discretion of the driver, as long as the animal does not affect the safe running of the vehicle. Guide dogs, hearing dogs and disability assistance dogs should be taken in the vehicle unless there are good reasons for not doing so. The seating capacity of a vehicle as stated by the manufacturer and insurer should never be exceeded. In the event of an accident, the organisation and the emergency services should be informed immediately. If a client falls ill or is injured during a journey, the driver should seek immediate medical help. We occasionally receive inquiries about whether volunteer drivers are subject to laws on taxis and private hire vehicles. If your volunteers only receive out-of-pocket expenses or HMRC approved mileage allowances, then they will not be receiving a profit and the vehicle should not be described as being for hire. The Community Transport Association provides useful information resources on the legal status of private hire vehicles, private service vehicles and car sharing schemes and we can give you the contact details for these if you wish. Driving licences should be checked when the volunteer starts and regularly whilst they are volunteering to make sure they don't have any recent or serious driving convictions. Licences should be full and not provisional, preferably without endorsements. If a driver has penalty points on their licence, the organisation will need to decide whether or not they think the driver is suitable for their driving role. Some organisations may want to set a minimum requirement for driving experience. Age discrimination should be avoided as long as a younger driver is experienced enough and an older driver is confident driving. The Volunteer Centre has a wide range of resources for those who manage volunteers. These range from sample documents, information sheets, we can give you links to online resources, and also potential networks that may help with your volunteer management where you can connect with other people who manage volunteers. There's no such thing as a silly question when you're involving volunteers and we're more than happy to help you if we can. Please do get in touch and we'll do our best to help. Here are our contact details, email, direct phone number and also our Facebook and Twitter feeds. There's loads of information on our website which is volunteeringcounts.org.uk including details of our training. We do regular posts on our blog sharing information ideas, events and also we have an opportunity of the day every single day for local volunteer involving groups. So why not get in touch and see how we can help you get the very best of your volunteer programme.